Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to code our first little mini project together just to dive into the concepts. So what I want to do is make a little animated welcome message that I could share with my students or in this case with you. So I'm going to look over here and by default you always have this sprite scratch the cat. I actually don't want him in my project so I'm going to come down here click the trash can and he's gone. And now instead, I'm going to come over here and click the plus button to choose a new sprite. And in this case, I'm going to go over to letters. And I'm going to choose W. And then I can actually click and drag it. Put it where I want. I'm going to go back and I'm going to keep choosing all the letters I need. To say welcome. Getting there. Now as we go along and do these little coding activities together, if you ever have any questions, feel free to leave a comment either in the comments section on YouTube or on Twitter. Um, and that way I can address your questions in a future video. So there we go, I have the word welcome. Now I looked pretty plain on a white background. I want to make that fancier. I'm actually going to have to scroll to the right. I don't know why it used to fit on the same screen. Maybe it is on your display, but for me, um, this little stage section is kind of hidden over there until I scroll to the right and I can then see it. Um, so you see here backdrops one, right now it's just a plain white one, but I can click the plus here and I can choose something else. Go with the stripes. That looks a little prettier. All right, so now it just looks like a graphic, but I want to actually code it to do something. So just for fun, I want to make my um, letters kind of like wiggle around and dance. So whichever uh, sprite I'm currently on, you'll notice that this part changes. because That's the one you're currently coding. So here I am on the W. I'm going to go to events because I always start with an events block. In this case, I want to use when the green flag is clicked. So event triggers kind of tell the code when to execute the rest of the code underneath of it. Um, so in this case, right at the beginning. There are other options that might make sense in other cases. Then I'm going to go back to motion. And I want it to just kind of wiggle back and forth, which is a turn. So I'm going to say when the green flag is clicked, turn to the right by 15 degrees. And then I want it to wiggle back the other way. So I'm going to say turn to the left by 15 degrees. Now when you're coding, it's always a good idea to test it out very frequently. So I'm going to go ahead and click my green flag. Hmm. Uh-oh. Nothing is happening. I wonder why. And you're going to see this happen a lot when you're coding. You're going to code something thinking you're doing one thing, hit go, and it's not going to behave the way you expected. Now this becomes part of debugging. We have to think through this logically. I wonder why. And in this case, the reason why is it's executing these instructions so quickly, it's not even visible to our eyes. So it, it really is doing both instructions. It's going this way and then coming back. But it's going so fast, we don't see it. We don't want that. So then we have to think, okay, how can I actually make it do what I really want it to do? And in this case, under the control section, there's this block that says wait one second. Um, and one second's probably too long, so you can click in here and you can change it to a different amount of seconds so 0 0.2 and um, whatever you want it doesn't really matter and then you can try it so okay maybe i've solved it now let's test it and find out all right so it worked we could see it it does wiggle there but now that runs into the next problem well i don't want it to just wiggle one time i want it to keep wiggling so in that case, we need another control block. And it's this one here that says forever. So I don't want it to stop wiggling. I want it just to keep wiggling all the time. 
So these blocks work by whatever is put in the middle of them is the part that's going to keep repeating. So I actually want to snap this. Oops. This is the frustrating part. Sometimes you have to get things apart because they snap where you don't want them to. So you have to play with it sometimes. Um, and always pulling down will separate things um, if they're stuck. So, okay, now it's going to repeat forever. Let's try that. Ah, okay. Now I'm seeing a different problem. I added a weight block at the end of one turn, but not at the end of the other turn. So I'm actually going to add a second weight block down here and change this to point two as well. Now let's try it. Okay, now it's wiggling like I expected, but when it stops, it's staying crooked, not coming back to right where I want it. So that's something else. Um, code does exactly what you tell it to do. It doesn't make any assumptions. So there's actually this block right here, point in direction 90. Um, and 90 stands for 90 degrees. And you can actually see right now on the W, it's actually at direction 120. Perfect. Um, but if I click on a different letter, like the E that I haven't coded yet, it'll say direction 90. So 90 is kind of straight up and down where I want it to be. So I'm gonna put that right at this, the beginning of the code so that every time I hit go, it resets to that before starting its wiggle. Okay, that's what I want. Now at this point, you might be thinking to yourself, Erica, that was complicated. How on earth did you figure all of that out? Um, I promise it didn't happen as fast as I'm showing you right here. Um, it takes some reflection. It takes some trial and error. Um, it takes going through all the different blocks and reading them and thinking, hmm, maybe it's that one. And you try it and it doesn't fix it. So then you delete it and you try something else. Um, it's very much a trial and error process. Um, very iterative, very collaborative, because sometimes, just like when you're proofreading something that you've looked at for a long time, the same thing happens with code. Sometimes you just can't see the mistake or the new idea. You need someone else's new perspective to help. So at this point, don't worry if this seems super complicated. I am kind of holding your hand through this one just to show you some concepts. Um, but this does come with time and come with experience. Um, and then sometimes, you know, I'm experiencing a similar problem here that I experienced with a different project in the past. And so I can then solve it a lot faster. Um, so don't be intimidated. Just have that growth mindset and keep trying. You're going to fail 100 times before you get it to work. And then you're going to feel really great when it does work. Okay, so now I have the code on the W, but none of the other letters are moving. So one trick is to use this section down here called the backpack. So I'm just going to click on it. It'll open up a bit. And then I can drag this code down into it. See how it turns blue like that? That's great. And you can let go. And it doesn't get rid of it from the W. It's still saved in the W, but now it's actually saved as well down in your backpack. Um, I'm going to move this so you can see a bit better. All right, so there it is. And now I can click over onto my next letter. Instead of having to recode and do that all over again, I can just drag up that, and there it is. You can do the same thing for every letter. Now when I hit go, they all wiggle, which is great. So the last finishing touch I want to add is just to add a little flair. I want to add some background music so that they're dancing to something. Um, and so what I can do is add um, some code to play some music. Now where to put that code, there's a bunch of places. Um, when code is kind of applicable to the whole project in general, I actually like putting it on the backdrop rather than on a specific sprite. Um, but there's no real right and wrong answer here. So on the backdrop, 
when the green flag is clicked, I want to play a sound until it's done. And right now, the only sound that's showing up is the one that says pop. I don't want just the pop sound effect, I want something else. So I can come over to sounds, I can choose a sound, and I want to loop something that can play over and over. Okay, that sounds good. I can check the other ones out too. And I'm going to go back to my code. And now instead of just pop, now I have the choice of dance magic. Um, and like I did before, I'm going to add a repeat forever, loop forever block. There we go. Pop that in the middle. And now, when I hit the green flag, I have my little dance. So I want to make sure I give a name to my project, which is entitled. And then it's saved, but as an option, you can also share it. And so when you share something, um, you can give it some instructions and you know, fill in these things. And then you can also click add to studio. Now as a group, we have a studio right here and you would just click the plus and it will add it to that. And then the benefit of that is, move this down here again. When we're here in the studio, you'll see it's here twice because I just redid it again to show you. Um, but when you click on a project that someone else has made, you can see inside to check out how they coded it. Um, and you should also have a button, I think, you can let me know if you don't, that says remix, which means that you can take this same project, add your own twist on it, and modify the code and see what happens. So, just to name what we've just done, um, so that you know, um, open it back up. As far as the concepts and the curriculum goes, we've actually covered um, sequential events, concurrent events, and repeating events. Um, so sequential events would be, you know, just this portion right here. These instructions are put in order; they happen in sequence. That's a sequential event, especially there with that event block on top to tell it when to start. So just that by itself would be a sequential event. Concurrent events is that idea that it's not just this block of code that's happening at once. You have that on the W, you have something else on each of the sprites, all the letters. And in our case, we had them all doing the same dance, but we could, if we wanted to, uh, change it. So maybe this one slightly different values and wiggles more um, and maybe the owl instead of wiggling back and forth we could make it jump up and down um, we could change things like that so that the different letters are doing different things um, but the idea that it's not just doing the w then the e then the l all of them are happening at the same time that's concurrent and then repeating events was that we didn't want it to just wiggle once and then stop so we added A repeat, in this case, repeat forever. We could have told it to repeat a certain number of times. Um, there's lots of different control blocks in here. Pretty much anything that's this kind of sandwich, some kind of repeating structure. Um, so that is grade one, grade two, and grade three. But as you can see, to make this little project, we needed all of them. This curriculum doesn't really work in silos. Um, you're going to have to apply things from lots of different grades in order to make something that works in the end. Um, that's going to be natural. So even if you're teaching grade eight, you're still going to need to know the concepts from grade one on up. You, can, you can't just abandon something and move on. It, it all becomes part of it. So anyways, that is a cool project. Check it out in the studio. 
make your own little message of some kind. Maybe it doesn't say welcome, maybe it says something else. Maybe it dances in a different way, you have a different background, different music. Um, but see what you can create, and I challenge you to share it to our studio so we can see what other people have come up with. Um, and then you can also be inspired by someone else by taking their project and remixing it with your own little spin on it. So thank you for joining me. Let me know uh, feedback if you have anything. I'd be glad to make some changes or to answer your questions if anything's coming up. All right, thanks, and we will see you next time.